Good afternoon, folks. I am not even going to worry about telling you what today's date is because it's not really important anymore. This video is going to revolve on something I read recently through the American Cozy book, which is a Hagee-inspired book for the newbies, the new people. And it's just a, um, it's just a book on ideas or ways to uh, create a comfortable comfort and happiness in your home or your life. Because I tell you what, when I started working with this book and reading this book, and granted, the first book I read was called Howdy Hagee or Hugi, um, which is a Scandin Scandinavian way of making your house comfortable and cozy and beautiful and decluttered and whatnot. And I tell you right now, my wife and I have been working the last two or three months on rearranging a lot of our different a lot of different rooms and decluttering those rooms. And yes, there are a couple of these rooms, like my personal space here has become, well, we worked on this room first and we decluttered it and fixed it up. And it looks, it the desk area looks nice, but the rest of the room kind of got recluttered because, well, we don't have a place to move stuff temporarily until we either use it for decorating or put it in the yard sale or give it away or whatever. But we, um, we recently finished up our room. There's one or two little bitty projects just to finish, do finishing touches, um, in our bedroom. And if you're new to my channel, um, I can tell you how to see those videos because those videos are actually on my wife's YouTube. My wife does DIYs and shopping hauls and things of that nature. I am the guy who is more um, book, talking about books, talking about things out of books, talking about, well, I just run down a list real quick of things that I talk about. I talk about my daily life. I talk about the Hagee or, or American Cozy books. I deal, I, I talk about um, mythology and Nordic, the Nordic people because of my connection to the Nordic people via DNA. I, you know, I just talk about various different subjects that may or may not pertain to ideas or things that other people can use to better, fight, better their lives. But I deal with stuff that are interesting to me. D&D, &D, mythology, theology, uh, self whatever <laughs> i i have a uh, an eclectic um interest but anyhow to get back to what i wanted to be on um i'm going to be reading a section out of the american cozy book i have been reading about how to um make, uh, basically comfort at the at the table basically we're dealing with um cozy cuisine and just kitchen stuff um one thing, one of the other reasons why I like this book over the other book I was reading is because it goes room by room and she uses a combination of scientific proven study and the fact that she is a home designer or decorator um, and she deals a lot with like feng shui and, you know, new, what a lot of people want to call a new age style of, of your home to bring or invite energy and positivity into your home. Um, I don't think it's just new age because a lot of this stuff is stuff that's being used in the Hagee stuff has been used in Europe for centuries. The feng shui has been used in Asian country for centuries. It's just new to America. Um, so anyhow, um, what I read yesterday is having to do with the kitchen and it says keeping and displaying food. For many people, food, uh, food enjoys one of the most visible portions in the home. This can be wonderful when the food is decorative and healthy, and less so when it comes in ugly cartons and garnishly colored packages that lead to an unpleasant, cluttered look. Use food as decoration for... Use food as a decorative force for good with these tips. And she gives you tips on how to use produce, mostly produce, to uh, beautify your home. Invest in beautiful, classical-shaped food storage containers. 
Transfer staples such as flour, grains, beans, and sweeteners to attractive containers. So you don't want just like your typical shaped container or you just don't want to leave it out in its, in its container. Um, most of our foods of that nature, our grains, flour, beans, and sweeteners, are usually kept in a drawer in a lock and lock or some sort of airtight container. Because one of the things you don't want to do is have that stuff, especially your flour and your sweetener, and sometimes your grains, in an open container because that just invites bugs, ants, beetles, um, weevils, various types of bugs that you just don't want to find in your flour because that usually means the flour is now contaminated by the bug or bugs. And it's just not pretty. Um, do the same with ingredients that must be kept in the fridge or freezer. By using beautiful colored, uh, excuse me, by using beautiful cool temperature storage containers for all your must be refrigerated items. Um, for the most part, we don't do that. Uh, the, the produce has drawers to go into that you can't really see into. Our cold cuts go into a cold cut drawer so you don't see them. The only thing that's left out is like eggs, which we put them in a different container instead of using, keeping them in their cardboard container. Your milk, uh, ketchup bottles, uh, condiment bottles, um, leftovers. We have uh, lock and lock containers. So it's e easy to store things into the refrigerator without making a cluttered mess. Yes, you might have to remove one or two items to find less used items in the back. It happens. But I understand what she means. She want, basically what she's trying to say is if you have to take it out of its packaging because it does not have a neat organized place to put it in, to put it in a different container, put it in a container that can handle the cold weather, uh, cold temperatures and put and make them nice and neat and organized so you don't have a cluttered uh, uh, fridge or freezer. Um, let's see here. Don't keep packaged food on the counter on top of the fridge or the dining room table or any other visible place. A vase of lemons and limes look inviting whenever you place it. A box of cereal will only give your home a cluttered look. Place all packaged food behind cupboards or pantry doors. So basically, if you don't have a way to display your food items on the countertops, out of their container. Um, for my house, most of our, our packaged um, foods, including cereals that we do put in um, washable containers, are in our cupboard, in our little pantry. Um, that way it doesn't make the house look cluttered. Um, my plan for today is to, to do some housework, but if Jerry doesn't feel like doing housework, I'm gonna be doing some cleaning because I noticed yesterday um, my kitchen area, my hot, my hot zones, which I have not been able to touch for almost two and a half weeks now, are starting to look bad. So I want to clean that up. I, I need to start, I need to start setting up a plan or a scheduling system where on certain days of the week, I do certain types of cleaning projects or cleaning in certain rooms to keep them from looking cluttered and dirty and just that. Um, let's see here. Next one. Choose uh, cho choose cupboards with solid doors over glass cupboards or open kitchen shelves, especially if you keep commercially packaged foods in your kitchen. So basically what she's trying to say is if it's a box item or something along that line um, and your kitchen does not have doors or their glass doors, Try to find a different place to put them that people don't see them because then it looks cluttered and uninviting. Uh, keep your fridge, freezer, stove, and cupboards as clean as you can. A pretty kitchen, a, excuse me, a pretty clean kitchen is much more inviting than a dirty one. I was just talking about that. That's one of the reasons why I want to clean up my kitchen because it's more inviting. 
and maybe I'll start doing more cooking projects and taping those, uh, videotaping those uh, cooking projects. Uh, the next one is colorful magnets, kids artwork, coupons, bills, calendars, and so forth do not belong stuck to the fridge. Your kitchen will look cleaner, warmer, and more inviting if you find another place for these items. Now, I'm not a parent, so I can't tell you um, that I have stuff in my fridge. My fridge doors are not magnetic. I've tried. I have a number of different magnets. Um, so a lot of my magnets that are in the kitchen, a lot of stuff that are clinging to my refrigerator in the kitchen are on the side walls. There are times I walked past there and went, we don't use them. They have no function. Why are they here? I go out into my mud room, which is my big, big freezer that holds most of my products, my frozen products, and I've got magnets all over it. And I'm like, there's my magnets, there's Jerry Ann's magnets, there's mom's magnets, there's um, magnetized uh, notepads, which are starting to, the, the notepad is falling away from the refrigerator because the magnet is at the, not at the very top. It's kind of like a couple inches down from the top. So it's like bending itself out of whack and I'm like we don't need them we don't use them they're just here for what I don't know so I've got to talk to the family and say hey can we can we downsize a lot of this stuff or can we find a new home for it instead of on a fridge door or wall or whatever this next one I want to read which I have not read to Jan because Vector she hates the word minimalist she thinks minimalist means basically having nothing. And I'm like, no. Minimalist is somebody who basically has plenty of stuff, but it's not over the top. It's not, it does not look like clutter. It's not extra. Um, I can understand here in the Midwest, especially this time of year where it's tornado season or the north part of the country where their blizzards can be basically so bad that they're locked in their homes for days on end or the south where or southwest especially where it's extremely hot outside and you don't really want to go grocery shopping and you want to buy a little extra so you only have to go grocery shopping maybe once a month type deal um i can understand having extra especially if it's stuff that you know you're going to end up eating or using but if you have extra and it's just basically sitting in your cupboards for ages that's too much um, just like the factor of the one of the reasons why I finally got Jerry to downsize and declutter is because the factor is too much. And I was, I was telling her, we don't have to live a minimal, minimalist lifestyle to basically having nothing, but we've got so much stuff that we're either a, not wearing, not using, it's just collecting dust or getting holes in it from, from moths or insects. Why do we have it? Why do we need all of it? She's working with me. I'm working with her. That's what counts. But anyhow, let's read this. It says, minimalist cooking for maximum enjoyment. There we go. Most Americans do not have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen. This has contributed to a $200 billion fast food industry in the U.S. as of 2015. $200 billion just for fast food? What and God, I'm sorry. I mean, I yeah, I enjoy my fast food burger once in a while, but two hundred million dollars for fast food industries. I'm in the wrong business. I need to own a fast food joint. Um, up to six billion dollars in 1970, according to the fast food industry analyst in 2017. An industry report by the organization Franchise Help. <sighs> My goodness. We spend that much money back in the 70s. Six billion dollars for fast food. Okay, yeah. Things I wish I knew when I was younger. 
I'm not saying that spending money on takeout and other convenience foods is a bad thing, but if you learn how to make a few basic items and set them aside weekly time, set aside weekly time for food prep, your life will change. Um, I agree with that. When my wife and I used to sit down and do meal preps for just simple, healthy, um, grab and go, oh, I don't feel like making lunch type deal, or I'm hungry, but I don't want to make anything. What can I grab to snack on? Um, we made, we, we've been making healthy choices. Um, we've been wanting to sit down and do this again, but we haven't been able to do it in a, in a while because of one thing or another. Um, mostly because of the fact that we've been busy with projects around the house that we forget to make grab and go quick and easy stuff. And then we end up going, Oh, I don't feel like standing at the stove. What can we order out? Yeah. Something I really don't like doing, but at, the t at there are times where it's just kind of like, <laughs> I've overworked myself. I don't feel like uh, cooking. Anyhow, healthy appetizing breakfasts, lunches and dinners and snacks will be easy and fast to put together. Your family will be, your family will experience an old fashioned pleasure of eating real food without being chained to some of the old fashioned torments of creating food. For ideas on how this could work for you, I offer a glimpse into my own kitchen system inspired by generations of traditional Danish and American cuisine. I call it minimalist cooking for maximum effort. You'll find that these comforting dishes not only free up your time and scent your home with comforting aromas, then also, uh, then also providing an important warmth, all of which work together to create maximum coziness with a surprisingly small amount of effort. And I'm not going to read off all these recipes because that would take way much time, way too much time. But she has recipes in here. One of them is for a easy roasted chicken. I have to try that. Fish baked in coconut milk. I'm not big on fish, but who knows? Slow cooker beans. I like my beans. I do like beans, so that might be interesting. Slow cooker beef. Roasted vegetables. Roasted pork tenderloin. Interesting. Then she has a little tidbit in here between recipes. Excuse me. Bare, bone, bare Bones Cooking Equipment Guide. A cluttered kitchen looks unappetizing, is hard to keep sanitized, and is difficult, or in some cases dangerous, to work in. In general, these items will are excuse me, let me reread re that. In general, these items are all you need to easily turn out wonderful meals. First one, the baggies. Yeah, no, the biggies. I'm sorry, the biggies. <laughs> uh boy. An oven with a stove top, a refrigerator with a freezer, and if you have room and can't afford it, a dishwasher. Most houses nowadays have those particular items. They have a stove top, they have a refrigerator, freezer combo, and um, a dishwasher. Most houses have that here in America. Some of them don't, either that or um, the previous owner um, bought the particular um, items that I just said and decided to take them with them when they, when they moved out, which I can understand because, hey, you put in a couple hundred dollars for a, a fancy stove or a nice refrigerator, freezer combo with ice maker and water dispenser or a dishwasher. Now, most most homes, the dish, the washer dryer system that you use for your clothes, most people take those because those, yeah, those are not standard in most homes. 
And we were lucky that when we moved into this house, it had all of the biggies. We did have to replace the, uh, we eventually replaced the dishwasher because it was leaking. We originally, uh, we just recently replaced the microwave because it was not cooking. It was not heating up the food, like it died. It will show you the time, it, you can punch in the functions, it will light up the interior and move the wheel around, but it would, it took, basically heat and serve sausage that we use for breakfast, it only takes about a minute to cook. After five minutes, it wasn't even lukewarm. And I was like, well, I guess we gotta replace this thing. You know. Um, knives and accessories. A well-made chef's knife that feels great in your hand, a paring knife, and serrated knives for cutting bread and tomatoes. Yeah. I can see that. I have a butcher block with a chef's knife, a bread knife, um, a filleting knife, a paring knife, um, what is it? Chef's knife, bread knife, paring knife, filleting knife, and uh, there's one more, and I can't remember. I think it's just a, just a serrated blade, blade, serrated knife, and six uh, uh, steak knives. In a butcher block on my kitchen counter it does not take up a lot of space no biggie um countertop appliances limit yourself to no more than three such as a juicer a blender and a coffee pot i don't have those three i don't have a juicer my blender which actually fits in one of my big drawers it's got a blender with two different types of blending cups and whatnot but on my countertop is um appliance wise is basically a ninja foodie the ninja foodie acts like a toaster dehydrator air fryer and oven in one and then my keurig but my keurig has its own coffee table spot um on what we call the coffee bar let's see here keep less yeah keep less use appliances off the counter and a dedicated cabinet and pull them out when you use them that's exactly what we did we have a bank of cabinet drawers that was part of the original kitchen cabinetry and one particular uh, drawer has our george foreman grill a flat iron grill that we can use on a tabletop and our waffle maker the other drawer has um the uh, ninja blender and a another blender which is basically it's an all-in-one blender you basically in the blender you can make um smoothies soup it has a heat function to cook soup in the blender um, um i forgot what else it, what it does but it's a multi-function type blender so i'm like cool my wife wanted it we had we've only we haven't used it yet, so. But my wife got it for really, really cheap from Pampered Chef. So she she wanted it, she got it. We haven't used it yet. I actually want to sit down and learn how to make soups out of it, with it, so I can make homemade soups, or chili, or smoothies even, and maybe get rid of the other blender because it only has one fu basic function, which is a blend. Let's see here, pots, pans, and stoveware. Most of us use the same pan and the same two pots over and over, which is why most people really only need a frying saute pan, a small or medium pot, and a pot that is large enough to cook pasta and make stock. Keep these heavily used pots and pans in your, on your stovetop. Okay. Oh, tucked away in a cupboard. Yeah, we've got a number of different pots and pans. And, and for, you know, I don't think we need as many because we hardly use half of what we have. But we haven't gotten into the kitchen to start downsizing in the kitchen. So that's probably going to be one of the areas that we talk about the most. 
Um, bakeware. As with pots, most of us use the same few baking pans. If you're in the market for a few new pieces, I recommend a 24 cup muffin tin, which I have, two nine inch cake pans, which I have, two baking sheets, which I have more than two because I have uh, the under storage underneath the stove, which a lot of people don't really use, has a lot of extra baking sheets because come Christmas season, we bake dozens, I mean literally dozens, like, uh, oh, a dozen dozen, 24 or more dozen cookies that we ship out to family and friends throughout the nation. Um, basically two baking sheets. Used for everything from free form baking loaves to cookies to fish patties. A nine by nine, a nine by eleven inch glass pan, which I have two of those, and a two quart casserole dish, which I have two of. <laughs> um, like I said, we have not start, we have not gotten into the kitchen to downsize stuff in the kitchen. Uh, Jenny and I both want to try to go in there and downsize a lot of stuff so we can have some of the cabinets that we put in place. Um, we have three black and white cabinets lined up against the kitchen wall that has a lot of extra baking stuff mom stuff some of our stuff um we're hoping to downsize a lot of that stuff i know a lot of mom stuff is for the holiday cookie baking um we're hoping to basically downsize some of those cabinets so we can dedicate one cabinet for specific purposes um anyhow kitchen helpers let the foods you eat regularly guide your choices. Keep items you use daily within each, within easy reach. For instance, a large vase near the knife block, I keep a vegetable peeler, a citrus reamer, a ladle, a large flat spoon, a wooden spoon, and a Danish whisk. These your less used kitchen helpers can remain out of sight in a drawer or cabinet. Well, I have multiple organizational systems on my kitchen cabinet by the stove with spatulas, spoons, whisks of all variety, wooden and plastic and some metal. Um, I want to downsize some of it because we don't need that much, but... If we can downsize some of the stuff in the drawers, maybe some of that extra stuff can go in drawers and the stuff that we use regularly can stay out on the counter. Last little tidbit before I end this particular um, video. It's called Soup is Good Food. Yes, it is. She says here, for many Danes and Americans too, soup is the epitome of Epitome, yeah, epitome of Hagee is cozy, warming, comfortable, and nourishing. And fortunately for the cook, it is easy and pleasurable to make, even for people who don't know how to or don't like to cook. I like to cook, I just don't know how to make soups. Um, that's why most Danes make soup almost daily. In fact, it's rare for a Danish kitchen to be without something simmering on a back burner. Okay. Ready to enjoy with the children. Ready to enjoy when the children get home from school and everyone returns from work. Yeah, okay. Uh, Danes are not recipe followers preferring to throw dishes together. That's me using whatever they have on hand. That's me and my dad. My dad was the same way. We didn't use recipes. It was something we concocted and it's stored up here in, the, in our head. And okay, it might not say, taste the same the second time around, but it's still a good product. Um, this soup blueprint with 
three variations honors Scandinavians love for create creative cooking while providing in just enough direction to ensure that you'll always end up with something so delicious that your loved ones won't stop raving about your soup making skills so she's got a couple of different um variations on 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 three different bisques one is a carrot ginger almond bisque i'm not going to read the the all the information i'm just reading the titles a winter squash and hazelnut bisque okay and a sweet potato and peanut bisque well, the the second two bisques, if you don't, if you are allergic to nuts, you probably have to take out the the nut factor. Um, but basically, the other two versions, basically says follow the carrot ginger almond bisque recipe with these ingredients change with these ingredient changes. So basically, you follow recipe number one, and then. The other two recipes are just variations of the first one, just different ingredients or added added ingredients. Um, let me see here, since it's, this video is not too long just yet. Uh, uh, no, I'll read that tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is a, she starts to talk about mindful eating rules. Mindful eating rules and then creating togetherness with when you cannot have a family meal. So that will be tomorrow's read. Um, I'll be honest with you. We're getting into a section of this book that um, it's intriguing because she talks about foods and different methods of dealing with foods and dealing with um, the kitchen area when it comes to food, food prep. Um, I don't know about you guys. I, I mean, I'm really enjoying this book. Um, it's gotten a lot of ideas. It's, it's given me a lot of ideas. It's given me the understanding of, of how to really cozify my house or hagify my house, hugify my house. Um, we've been, like I said, we've been working on it for a couple months now. Um, we wanted to work on it before I got laid off. But the problem with that was um, time. The days that I was off, I was either too tired or just didn't feel like doing it. Or the days I did work and came home and we had time, but I just, I didn't feel like doing anything. I was just too tired and too like, I want to relax because I'm on, I, when I was working, I was on my feet six to eight hours a day, serving people food, dealing with cleaning, dealing with this, dealing with that, that basically is what I had to do when I had to come home. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, so things got put off. We got put off. But I think, per, I personally think um, that me getting laid off was a godsend. Because um, then that gave me the time to do more studies, do more videos, um, and then start the projects we've been talking about for a year or more. So now that we, now that I'm, we're doing it, I'm like, okay, this is great. This is good. Everything's working out fine. We're not on the struggle bus. We're making ends meet. It just, we don't have extras to go out and have fun or anything like that, which is fine because we can find ways to have fun here at the house. Um, so I've been just like, okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Things are, are ends of being made, you know, connecting and whatnot. And then here I am thinking, okay, I'm going to have to start worrying about looking for a job here in the next month or so. I thought I was going to have to look for a job this month, but we made enough money and whatnot to make ends meet and we're, we're good. Um, so we just have to worry about September. And then what I'm hearing and seeing lately, especially here in Rolla is, um, because our area has been hit with a lot of cases of the new Delta variant, um, the CDC is basically starting to say, put your mask back on. 
And I'm like, I haven't even taken it off. You know, I go out of my house. I have my mask in my pocket. I go to a public place. I put my mask back on. Just the way I am. Until basically there is no more variance or COVID of any kind, shape or form. Um, I'm doing what I have to do. But the thing is, is because we, we've we gotten a, a major spike in the last uh, 30 days. We've have, had over 100 cases, um, 150 cases, I think, from my county. Um, and I'm like, or maybe that was just the whole state of Missouri. I don't remember now. Um, Jerry was telling me about it yesterday and I forgot. But before we went to Texas and I went to get food at... Um, I went to go do a pickup for food at Wendy's. Um, their lobby was open. I can go in there and get my food, get the food and whatnot, and go home or deliver it or whatever. I went up there the other day to. Um, they forgot to uh, deliver part of our meal, and I had to go up there to get it. And I was saying, okay, I'll just park, go inside, get it, and go home. Lobby was closed. Lobby was closed with a sign saying lobby currently closed due to COVID or something along that line. And I just kind of went, okay, so I have to wait in a line, tell somebody on the squawk box that they forgot to deliver. I've got my receipt. You know, I thought I was going to have to go through a whole rigmarole. And I just said, hey, um, yeah, I just got my food delivered and you were missing a sandwich. Um, I have the receipt. Um, is there any way we can fix this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I come up to the first window. And I went, okay. Got up to the first window, or got up to the second window, of the pay window. And I let the kid and I smile. I had my mask on and whatnot. I said, hey, um, yeah, I'm the guy that's coming to pick up a sandwich that wasn't delivered by DoorDash. And they were and I'm like, all right, sure, no problem. I got up there, the manager was in the window putting the sandwich in, a fresh made sandwich. And he was handing it to me, he was like, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, blah, 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 you know. I put in a, a little coupon for, you know, a free sandwich your, your next time around. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. You know, you know, it, it's a common, it's a common mistake. A lot of people, you know, it, it's made, especially in the fast food industry. A lot, a lot of times when you're really busy during the rush peak, um, things like that do happen. But because of the whole situation, COVID and whatnot, I don't know if there's going to be any jobs available because most people who got jobs in between the first one and now the second one, um, unless they're laid off or their their business closes or whatnot, they're going to keep their jobs as best as they can. Unless you're a high school and you're going back to school and you're leaving a job anyhow, and who knows if they're going to have they're going to let that opening be open. But I figured, um, my wife and I kind of figured, if we keep on plugging away the way we've been plugging away and she gets back on her her doing what she was doing. And granted, we had a week off. So yeah, our we had a slump during that week. But Jane and I both are like, if we can just keep, just keep plugging away at it and, and, and try to get you know our revenue back up, we shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Well... If August being, um, it had a good run and then it had a week of, of, of downslide, um, still gave us enough money to, to make do and pay our bills. Um, I don't think we're going to have a problem. I think this might be a, I don't want to call it a permanent thing because I don't want to jinx it, but if it's good and it's permanent, I'll be happy. Um, yeah, it might put off a lot of our hopes and dreams and whatnot for a while. Uh, but I don't know. Anyhow, um, I'm going to go ahead and get off before it does get too long. Uh, or my brain starts going, hey, let's talk about this. No. no. Um, anyhow, if you enjoyed this little vlog, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, Put them in the question and comment box. Um, when it comes to um, my vlogs about what I'm reading, if you guys can keep the comments to the subject matter at hand, 
great. If not, that's fine and dandy. I mean, I'm the same way. I kind of go, oh, wait a minute. Um, I want to ask this question, but it has nothing to do with that particular video. It happens. Uh, but I will read your comments and I will address them and deal with them to the best of my ability. In a previous video earlier today, I did um, answer two questions or I answered some information from um, Sheila Hall. Um, so I had no problem with doing that. In fact, I enjoy answering questions because then it gets my mind turning and makes me go, hmm, let's, do I know that information? Um, if not, let's look it up. Um, but yeah, I like questions. Um, especially when they're positive questions, they're asking positive information. But anyhow, um, yeah, if you liked it, thumb it. If you have a question, put it in the comment box. If you're new to my channel and want to, there's a button down here that says subscribe. You click on that little button and a little, a little bell will pop up. And you click on that bell and YouTube will let you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, you guys have a good day. Bye.